It's great to see Republicans and Democrats working together, talking together, uh, coming up with solutions, whether you agree with them or not. And, uh, but uh, the fact that there are people sitting down uh, across the table from each other and working through some of these big issues that, um, that we face here, uh, one of which obviously in this country is maintaining a strong infrastructure, uh, is uh, it's encouraging. And in many ways, uh, it's uh, refreshing to see that, Mr. President, happening here. And why it's sort of ironic, too, that in the light of that spirit of bipartisanship that we uh, continue to see um, nominees brought to the floor that don't reflect that spirit. The Senate voted last week to bring Tracy Stone Manning's nomination to the Senate floor. It's difficult to know exactly what President Biden was thinking when he decided to nominate Ms. Stone Manning for Director of the Bureau of Land Management. Perhaps the administration's vetting wasn't thorough enough. Otherwise, it's pretty difficult to understand why the president would nominate an individual with ties to an eco-terrorist organization, an eco-terrorist organization to head the Bureau of Land Management. That's not all. She was actually involved in a tree spiking plot during her time in graduate school, sending a threatening letter to the U.S. Forest Service at the request of one of the individuals involved in spiking trees in an Idaho forest. Tree spiking, as many know, involves hammering spikes into the trunks of trees to cripple chainsaws or the equipment at the sawmill where the trees are processed. It poses a significant threat to logging and mill equipment, but most seriously, it poses a threat to human life. In a famous incident, a worker at a lumber mill in California was engaged in splitting logs when his saw hit a spiked log and the saw exploded. And I'll let a Washington Post story covering the incident speak for itself, and I quote from the Washington Post. He was nearly three feet away when the log hit his saw and the saw exploded. One half of the blade stuck in the log. The other half hit Alexander in the head, tearing through his safety helmet and face shield. His face was slashed from eye to chin. His teeth were smashed and his jaw was cut in half. Alexander had never even heard of a sabotage tactic called tree spiking until he became a victim of eco-terrorism. Someone who objected to tree cutting had embedded a huge steel spike in the log that violently jammed the saw, end quote. And then the Washington Post continued, and I quote again, tree spikes are among the most vicious of the strategies. While the tree is still in the forest, the spike is driven in at an angle, so the head is hidden in the bank, in the bark, I should say. It can shatter a chainsaw on impact, sending pieces of razor-sharp steel flying, end quote. Mr. President, it's very hard for me to believe that we are seriously considering confirming an individual to head the Bureau of Land Management who was in any way involved with tree spiking. Furthermore, Ms. Stone Manning apparently initially refused to cooperate with the subsequent investigation into the tree spiking incident, only coming clean after it became clear that she could face criminal charges for her role in the incident. Equally troubling is the less than forthright response that she provided to the Senate on her nominee questionnaire about whether or not she had ever been investigated by a law enforcement organization. And Mr. President, Ms. Stone Manning's involvement in the tree spiking incident is not the only reason to be concerned that she has extremist views. As a graduate student, she also argued for population control, in one instance referring to a child as a, quote, environmental hazard, end quote. Last year, she took advantage of Twitter to promote an article. Her husband wrote in which she expressed he expressed satisfaction at the idea of seeing homes people have built in forests burn in fires. Mr. President, President Obama's first Bureau of Land Management director withdrew his support for Ms. Stone Manning's nomination over her involvement in the tree spiking plot. A deputy director at the BLM under President Obama also expressed his concern over the nomination, noting, and I quote, much of the focus seems to be whether this is a Democrat or Republican thing, but the lens I look at this through is as a 38-year career person in both agencies. You need the career employees to implement your agenda successfully across the West. Your leader has got to be respected by career employees and across the landscape in both blue and red states." End quote. Mr. President, his point is well taken. How are BLM employees and the many Americans who regularly interact with the Bureau of Land Management going to feel about working with Ms. Stone Manning? Our public lands are used for a variety of purposes, including recreation, livestock grazing, and timber harvesting. 
what kind of attitude should we expect Ms. Stone Manning to display toward timber harvesting? Is this really the best President Biden can do when it comes to the director of the Bureau of Land Management? As 75 House Republicans sent in a letter, said in a letter to President Biden urging him to withdraw the nomination, and I quote, there is no doubt that someone with this history of extreme violent views should not be in a position of authority and an agency responsible for managing 245 million of acres of federal lands and 700 million acres of mineral estate, end quote. Mr. President, I wish I could say that Ms. Stone Manning's nomination is an aberration. But in fact, President Biden has nominated a number of candidates with extremist views for various offices. Last week, we voted on his nominee to head U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, a nominee who failed to receive even a single bipartisan voting committee, due in part to her refusal to say she won't completely bypass Congress when fashioning policies to deal with those who are in the U.S. unlawfully. Then there's the President's nominee for head of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, David Chipman, whose main interest seems to be targeting law-abiding gun owners and who has communicated a clear disdain for gun owners in public remarks. This nominee was also apparently the subject of a complaint for making racist remarks while working at ATF. Then there are the multiple President Biden nominees now serving in the Department of Justice who have publicly expressed their support for defunding the police. That's right. President Biden filled key posts at the Justice Department, the department charged with enforcing the law and prosecuting criminals with individuals who've gone on the record with their support for defunding the police. And I suppose it's no real surprise that President Biden would nominate an individual to the Bureau of Land Management who once referred to a child as an environmental hazard when you consider who he nominated to head up the Department of Health and Human Services. HHS Secretary Javier Becerra's rapidly pro-abortion views put him far to the left of the majority of Americans. Polls consistently show that a strong majority of Americans believe that there should be at least some restrictions on abortion. But President Biden's HHS secretary doesn't seem to support any restrictions on abortion. And if he does, I'd sure like to hear about him. During his time in the House of Representatives, Secretary Becerra repeatedly voted against banning partial birth abortion, an abortion procedure so heinous that I think most Americans would rightfully shrink from seeing it performed on an animal, let alone a human being. As I said, given that, I suppose it's not hard to believe that President Biden nominated an individual to the Bureau of Land Management who once described a child as an environmental hazard. Mr. President, President Biden tends to present himself as a moderate and someone who will bring people together. He said in his inaugural address, I pledge this to you. I will be a president for all Americans. In practice, however, too often he seemed to be a president for the far left wing of the Democrat Party. I hope that my Democrat colleagues will think twice before confirming Ms. Stone Manning as head of the Bureau of Land Management. Involvement with eco-terrorism should be a disqualifying factor for heading up this agency.